All right, thank you all for coming. You know, it, uh, it was outstanding to go on the road and get your first conference victory, a road win against Charlotte. Uh, I'm telling you, <clears throat> proud of this team to get down 21 to nothing and just kept chipping away and to come out of the end of that game with a 22 to 21 victory. The locker room was, uh, you know, one of joy. It was one of where everybody that's involved with the football program from the, the players, the coaches, the trainers, equipment, uh, you know, sheer energy, sheer jubilation uh, to get that win. And, you know, you really you can't say enough about young men that have had a tough season that when you get down 21 to nothing could have gone the other way. And instead it strengthened their resolve to keep fighting and to keep plugging away. And, you know, you look uh, offensively. What, of what we did, we ran 98 plays in that game, 50 runs and uh, 48 passes. We only had one three and out uh, on the afternoon. And they just kept playing. And I think Tyler Staling's performance was as gritty a performance as that you'll see uh, from a quarterback because he took a, a lot of hits. He threw the ball very effectively. He ran the ball uh, very effectively. He actually carried it uh, 20 times, 15 of them were design zone reads and the other five were where he just pulled it and scrambled and uh, really pleased with uh, how Tyler ran the offense. Uh, we had a lot of quality drives in that game, but what we're still not getting, we had a 14 play drive where we didn't get points. You know, we had a 10 play drive where we didn't get points. You have to get points when you get those kind of drives and we'd get a foolish penalty or make a mistake and that would set us back. Uh, but I was, I was pleased with the, the third down, the way we converted our third down to keep the drives alive. And, you know, Austin Walters really performed well. Then you got to look at what Zach Wright did and Kylan Granson uh, on the receptions, both of them double figures. And I think Chuck Poole said that was the first time in Rice where we had two receivers with, with double figures and receptions. And, you know, we always talk about just needing one more point, and the offense generated 22. And defensively, at the first quarter, we'd given up, uh, I believe it was 169 yards uh, in the first quarter. And then the second, third, and fourth quarter only gave up 110 yards. So you got to be pleased with, too, just how the defensive players just kept responding to adversity. And they just continued to play, you know, extremely, extremely hard. Uh, Khalif Phillips, their running back, had had six 100-yard gains. And we knew going into that our goal was to, to hold him to under 100. And we actually held him to, to 87 yards. We tackled extremely well. We had good field distribution. We kept, kept leverage on the football. We contested every route. Would still like to see more takeaways uh, over there. But that's you know really an outstanding defensive performance. Special teams, DJ Green came back. It was his first game back this season. He had had uh, surgery last spring, and DJ Green came back and was an absolute force on special teams. Uh, he and Brandon Douglas are the, the young men that caused the fumble right before halftime that, that gave us the, a one-play drive for a touchdown, and he was a force. He was very uplifting and inspirational in everything he did from – punt return to kickoff return. He just kept making play after play, so it was great to have uh, DJ Green back. Uh, Jack Fox, our punter, really I think he's one of the best situational punters in the conference uh, for getting the ball inside the 20. And uh, real quick too, to hop back, just defense the game. Emmanuel Eller Ellerby played with 16 tackles. Uh, it's just amazing. He's all over the field with his double figure tackles and Alex Lyons had eight and but then Brian Womack uh, really had a, a one of his best games for Rice he had three and a half tackles for a loss had a forced fumble had two quarterback hurries was really pleased with uh, with his play but great to great to get that win and you know we got UTEP coming to town on senior day uh, they've won three ball games this year but I tell you, they have a great running back in Jones who's got right at 1,400 yards rushing. He's averaging, I think, 7.2 yards a carry. Then they're very sound and solid offensively, defensively, and on special teams. And we're going to have to play well and tackle again in space like we did last week. 
uh, to get a win. Coach Kugler has really done a great job of keeping that football team playing hard. Well, I think, you know, it just really does reveal the character of these young men because if you were standing on the sidelines or in the locker room at halftime, it wasn't a, a poor, woe is us. It was let's get this thing done. And, you know, we had a, a lot of guys lead in that locker room at halftime, and it just turned it. It was, I think, we just maintained a great attitude and had a had a will to win. And, and they just we just kept making enough plays to, to pull it out there at the end. And, you know, it's, um, it, like I said, it told you all along, we practice like we're undefeated. Uh, and there's been no give up in them. And I think that's what led, you know, ultimately to this win. Well, they're, like I said, they're solid everywhere. they are uh, got a great tight end, too, that really helps them in the run game. Plinkle, I believe his name is. And um, anytime you have a running back like Jones and a quarterback, uh, you know, they are above average players. And uh, just their, the way they can run the ball, the way they can play action the ball, the way they can keep it out of your hands when they get going. That's what I mean. We're going to have to try to get them behind the chains. Uh, much like we did with Charlotte. Charlotte was a team that wanted to stay on schedule and get into third and shorts, and we, we kept preventing them from getting in third and short. And uh, That's what we need to do with UTEP, you know, and it came down to, to us tackling well. And, and defensively, UTEP runs a lot of uh, blitzes or high pressure. I mean, they kind of really have an extensive playbook defensively. Uh, so it's one we're going to have to prepare for, and it's one where I know these players I come over here and like I said, they, we practiced like we hadn't lost a game this year. You know, the way he ran the bubbles and his routes, there is nothing that's true freshman about him. And he is 215 pounds. You know, he's a guy when he walked through the door, the first time he power cleaned for a max, power cleaned 320. So he's big, he's powerful, he's fast, and is very confident in his ability. You know, this is the first game we actually left three receivers uh, behind where he got extensive reps where we were having to take him out and give him some breaks because he hadn't played that much. But he he wanted in there and he he did a great job not only catching the ball, but he's very physical and when he blocks for people too. But yeah, there's nothing true freshman about him. His uh, future's really bright. <clears throat> yeah, I think it does. I think, you know, you they played them extremely well. If you see how FAU won that right at the end of the game, um, and our, our FAU game, had we taken advantage of our opportunities, should have been a lot closer at the end. So I really think it's two, looking at it, two evenly matched opponents that are going to be here Saturday, just from looking at that video. And I think that's where this week, any opportunity we get for points, we we need to get them. It's, we don't have a huge margin of error against, against UTEP. Yeah, you know, he just played with so much grit. Um, Saturday and really ran the ran the offense well, and you know made great decisions other than that one uh, where he threw into cover two and got the interception. But also in addition to his great stats, he also had one tackle on the day when he threw that interception. He's the one that that tackled the guy and got him out of bounds on the sideline. But he is just his confidence grows uh, weekly. Uh, you know it was good too to get Jackson Tyner and J J T Granado some snaps in that game to to let them grow also. But really, that was Tyler Staling's most complete performance uh, this season. Just uh, the way he threw the ball, the way he ran it, just the way he he ran the offense, and the way his leadership is really starting to, to grow. You see him talking to people and being more demanding, very proud of him. Yeah, there's no doubt. He's I think, averaging 7.2 yards a carry. He's one of the all-time leading running backs in Conference USA. You know, he is a, he's a great player. So going up against Khalif, did that kind of help? Two, you guys two different. Khalif's more of a downhill power. Jones can do it all. He can come at you downhill and make you miss, or he can go to the perimeter and make you miss. A lot of our success Saturday with Khalif was making him bounce uh, to the sidelines where he couldn't get that head of steam. And Jones can can beat you either way with his with his feet or his power. He's got great vision too. He makes people miss. Sure, I mean that's what we're counting on is, you know, taking that win, and building some momentum. And I think when you get our players up here in a little bit, you'll see that you know that's uh, when you win, great things happen in your program. And I think going forward, it's really going to help us. 
seniors? Uh, you know, we don't have a lot of seniors, but we've got really good quality seniors. Um, Zach Wright has been very instrumental in, in giving the team direction uh, in his leadership in the locker room and out on the field. Uh, you know, he's uh, an emotional leader of this football team. He refuses to let anybody quit around him. Same defensively with Alex Lyons. You know, last week defensively we had Alex and Tabari uh, playing, and Alex is the same way, you know, in the locker room. They're not going to let guys around them let down. As tough as it's been, you know, these seniors are trying to hold this team to a standard of excellence. Absolutely, he's already a junior leader. Yeah, it's uh, – It'll be a smooth transition for him because of the the type of young man that he is too. I think that was Chuck his sixth double figure tackle game this this season. He's playing really he's playing real well. And then this week too, we we'll, defensively we'll get J T. Blassing game back at corner. We should get uh, possibly Samuel Stewart back at running back. Should get Juwan Davis back. Uh, have an outside chance to get Isaiah back. Uh, so we, we'll also get some, some guys back this week and that'll help us. Number